One of my clients took vitamin D every morning for three years. 5,000 IU with breakfast every single day, never missed. His doctor had recommended vitamin D for prostate health. Take it daily, the doctor said, but didn't specify when. After three years, the client's PSA, 8.4, same as three years earlier, not one-tenth different, despite three years of daily vitamin D. Then he attended a men's health seminar. A researcher presented findings on vitamin D timing. The research showed something unexpected. Vitamin D absorption and effectiveness differ dramatically based on time of day. A 2022 study tracked vitamin D blood levels in two groups. Group one took vitamin D in the morning. Group two took vitamin D at night before bed. Same dose, same people, different timing, results after 12 weeks. Morning group, average blood level increase of eight nanograms per milliliter. Night group, average increase of 14 nanograms per milliliter. 75% better absorption with nighttime dosing. The researchers found three reasons. First, vitamin D receptors in cells are more active during sleep. The body's repair and regeneration processes peak at night. Vitamin D supports these processes. Taking it at night aligns with natural circadian rhythms. Second, evening meals typically contain more fat than breakfast. Vitamin D is fat-soluble, requires fat for absorption. Dinner usually has more fat than cereal or toast. Better absorption environment. Third, less interference from other supplements. Most people take multiple supplements in the morning, calcium, magnesium, zinc, multivitamins. These can compete for absorption. Evening vitamin D avoids this competition. My client switched immediately. Moved his 5,000 IU vitamin D from breakfast to dinner. Same dose, just different timing. Three months later, PSA 8.1, down three-tenths from 8.4. First movement in three years, six months. PSA 7.7, .7, down seven-tenths total, nine months. PSA 7.4, down one full point. Three years taking it wrong, he told me. Just moving it tonight made all the difference. His vitamin D blood level confirmed the change. Morning dosing, 28 nanograms per milliliter. After switching tonight, 42 nanograms per milliliter. 50% higher blood levels from timing alone. Through working with clients, I've identified five common mistakes men make with vitamins that reduce effectiveness or actually worsen PSA. Mistakes that turn beneficial supplements into wasted money or inflammatory problems. Today, I'm revealing all five mistakes. When to take vitamins for maximum absorption. Which doses cross from helpful to harmful. Why some vitamin forms are dangerous. How food timing affects vitamin effectiveness. And which vitamin combinations to avoid. If you're taking vitamins daily and not seeing PSA improvement, type vitamins in the comments and I'll send you the complete vitamin timing and dosing guide. This is educational information based on research, not medical advice. Client names and details have been changed to protect privacy while maintaining accuracy of patterns observed. Individual responses vary significantly. Work with your healthcare provider on supplement decisions. Let me show you the five mistakes. Mistake number one, taking vitamin D at the wrong time. This is the mistake my client made, and it's extremely common. Most men take vitamin D in the morning with breakfast. It seems logical. Morning is when most people take supplements, but research shows this is the worst time for vitamin D. The 2022 study I mentioned found 75% better absorption with nighttime dosing, but there are additional studies confirming this pattern. A 2014 study in the Journal of Bone and Mineral Research compared morning versus evening vitamin D dosing in postmenopausal women, evening dosing produced significantly higher blood levels. Another 2021 study found that vitamin D taken with the largest meal of the day, typically dinner, resulted in 50% higher absorption than taking it with a small breakfast. The mechanism involves several factors. Vitamin D is fat-soluble. It needs dietary fat for absorption. Most people eat more fat at dinner than breakfast. Olive oil, butter, fatty fish, avocado, nuts. These fats create the optimal environment for vitamin D absorption. Additionally, the body's circadian clock affects nutrient metabolism. 
vitamin D receptors are more active during evening and nighttime hours. This aligns with the body's natural repair processes that occur during sleep. Vitamin D supports immune function, cellular repair, and inflammation regulation, all processes that peak at night. Taking vitamin D at night supports these natural rhythms. Beyond timing, there's the issue of interference. Most people take multiple supplements in the morning. Calcium interferes with vitamin D absorption. Magnesium competes for absorption pathways. Fiber supplements reduce fat-soluble vitamin absorption. Taking vitamin D alone at dinner eliminates these interactions. Another client followed this advice. He'd been taking vitamin D at breakfast for two years. Blood level, 26 nanograms per milliliter. Below optimal despite taking 4,000 IU daily. PSA, 8.3. He switched to taking vitamin D with dinner. Three months later, blood level 35 nanograms per milliliter. Up 9 points. PSA, 7.9. Down 4 tenths. The solution? Take vitamin D with dinner or your largest meal. Ensure the meal contains at least 15 grams of fat. This simple timing change can increase effectiveness by 50 to 75%. Mistake number two, taking mega doses. I've seen clients taking 10,000 to 20,000 IU of vitamin D daily. More is better, they think. It's not. For most nutrients, there's a therapeutic range. Below the range, deficiency problems. Within the range, optimal health benefits. Above the range, toxicity or paradoxical harm. Vitamin D's optimal range for most men is 2,000 to 4,000 IU daily. Some men with severe deficiency need 5,000 IU temporarily under medical supervision, but 10,000 IU or more long-term can cause problems. Excessive vitamin D raises blood calcium levels. Hypercalcemia causes calcium deposits in soft tissues, including potentially in prostate tissue. Calcifications increase inflammation and PSA. Research shows that very high vitamin D levels, above 80 nanograms per milliliter, correlate with increased health risks, not benefits. A client was taking 15,000 IU daily. My doctor said vitamin D is important, so I take a lot. His blood level, 92 nanograms per milliliter, far above optimal. His calcium was elevated, PSA, 9.1. I suggested reducing to 4,000 IU daily. Within three months, his vitamin D level dropped to 54 nanograms per milliliter. Optimal range, calcium normalized, PSA, 8.5, down 6 tenths. Six months, PSA, 8.0, down 1.1 total. Mega dosing had been creating problems. The solution, stay within research-supported doses. Vitamin D, 2,000 to 4,000 IU for most men. Have blood levels tested annually. Target range, 40 to 60 nanograms per milliliter. Don't exceed 5,000 IU without medical supervision. Mistake number three, wrong vitamin E form. Many men take vitamin E supplements for antioxidant benefits but the form and dose matter critically. The SELECT trial, Selenium and Vitamin E Cancer. Prevention trial, tested vitamin E at 400 IU daily in 35,000 men. Results, 17% increase in prostate cancer risk, not decrease, increase. The trial used synthetic DL-alpha tocopherol. Most vitamin E supplements contain this synthetic form because it's cheap but it may have pro-oxidant effects at high doses. Natural vitamin E is D-alpha tocopherol. Food sources provide a complex of eight vitamin E compounds, four tocopherols, four tocotrienols. Supplements typically isolate just one form. This imbalance may cause problems. A client had been taking vitamin E supplements, 400 IU of synthetic D-L-alpha tocopherol daily for four years. PSA, 8.7, slowly rising over those four years. When the select results were published, his doctor told him to stop. He stopped vitamin E supplements, started eating foods naturally rich in vitamin E instead, sunflower seeds, hazelnuts, spinach, avocado. Three months after stopping supplements, PSA 8.3, down four tenths, six months. PSA 7.9, down eight tenths total. The solution, Avoid isolated high-dose synthetic vitamin E supplements. If you want vitamin E benefits, get it from Whole Foods.
or choose mixed tocopherol supplements at low doses, no more than 100 IU daily. Never exceed 200 IU of isolated alpha tocopherol. Mistake number four, taking fat-soluble vitamins without fat. The fourth mistake is taking fat-soluble vitamins on an empty stomach or with low-fat meals. Vitamins A, D, E, and K are fat-soluble. They require dietary fat for absorption. Without fat, most of the vitamin passes through unabsorbed. Research shows that vitamin D taken with a fat-containing meal is absorbed 30 to 50% better than when taken with water alone. A study compared vitamin D absorption with different meals. Fat-free meal, poor absorption, minimal blood level increase. Low-fat meal, 5 grams, moderate absorption. High-fat meal, 30 grams, excellent absorption, 3 to 5 times higher blood levels. A client took vitamin D and K2 every morning on an empty stomach with just water. I don't want food to interfere, he said. After 18 months, his vitamin D blood level, 24 nanograms per milliliter, deficient despite taking 5,000 IU daily. He was absorbing maybe 20% of what he took. I suggested taking vitamins with dinner instead. Dinner provided 20 to 30 grams of fat from olive oil, salmon, and avocado. Three months later, vitamin D level 38 nanograms per milliliter up 14 points from better absorption. PSA improved from 8.6 to 8.1, down 5 tenths. The solution, always take fat-soluble vitamins with meals containing at least 15 grams of fat. Good sources, olive oil, nuts, avocado, fatty fish, eggs, cheese. Evening meals typically contain more fat than breakfast. That's why nighttime dosing often works better. Mistake number five, taking all vitamins together. Many men take a multivitamin plus separate minerals all together with breakfast. Get it done all at once, they think. But this creates absorption interference. Minerals compete for absorption in the intestines. Calcium blocks iron absorption. Zinc blocks copper absorption. High-dose magnesium competes with calcium. Taking everything together means poor absorption of multiple nutrients despite high doses. A client took a multivitamin, calcium, magnesium, and zinc all together every morning. After two years, blood tests showed low iron and low copper, despite supplementing both. His PSA, 8.5, not improving. I suggested separating supplements. Morning, multivitamin with breakfast. Afternoon, zinc with lunch. Evening, calcium and magnesium with dinner. This separation eliminated competition. Three months later, iron and copper levels normalized. PSA, 8.0, down 5 tenths, 6 months. PSA, 7.6, down 9 tenths total. The solution, separate competing minerals. Take calcium and magnesium at night. They support sleep and bone health. Take iron and zinc in the morning or afternoon, away from calcium. Take multivitamins alone with a meal. Space supplements at least 4 hours apart when possible. Now you know the 5 mistakes. Here's what to do instead. Timing, vitamin D with dinner or largest meal, 15 grams fat minimum. Fat-soluble vitamins, A, E, K, with fat-containing meals. Water-soluble vitamins, B, C, morning or afternoon, with food. Calcium and magnesium, evening with dinner. Iron and zinc, morning or afternoon, separate from calcium. Dosing. Vitamin D, 2,000 to 4,000 IU daily for most men. Test blood levels annually, Target 40 to 60 nanograms per milliliter. Vitamin E. Avoid isolated high-dose supplements. Get from food or use mixed tocopherols at 100 IU maximum. Zinc. 15 to 30 milligrams daily. Not more than 50 milligrams without medical supervision. Magnesium. 300 to 400 milligrams daily. Forms. Vitamin D, D3, colocalciferol, not D2. Vitamin E. Mix tocopherols from food sources preferred. Magnesium, glycinate or citrate, not oxide. Zinc, picolinate or citrate, not oxide. Food pairing, always take fat-soluble vitamins with meals containing fat. Separate competing minerals by at least four hours. Before concluding, it's important to emphasize that vitamins, when taken correctly, can be valuable for health. Large-scale research shows benefits of adequate vitamin D for bone health, 
immune function, and overall mortality. These five mistakes don't mean vitamins are bad. They mean timing, dose, form, and combinations matter significantly for safety and effectiveness. The goal is optimizing how you take vitamins, not eliminating them. My client took vitamin D every morning for three years. His PSA stayed at 8.4, no improvement, because he was taking it at the wrong time, absorbing only a fraction of what he swallowed. When he switched to taking vitamin D with dinner, his PSA dropped one full point in nine months. Same dose, just better timing. The five mistakes, taking vitamin D at the wrong time instead of with dinner, mega dosing beyond research supported amounts, using wrong vitamin E forms at dangerous doses, taking fat soluble vitamins without fat, taking all supplements together, creating interference. Avoid these five mistakes and vitamins can support your health. Make these mistakes and vitamins become wasted money or potential harm. Comment vitamins below and I'll send you the complete guide, optimal timing for each vitamin, research supported doses, best forms to choose, and the daily supplement schedule that maximizes absorption while avoiding interference. Subscribe because next video I'm revealing the five foods that work synergistically with vitamins to lower PSA faster than either alone.